Hello friends, welcome back to another episode. So today we have Vogue, the April 2018 issue. But before we go to that, let me correct something that I said in the last episode. So I really caught this and it was really a faux pas on my part. So we talked about these images, right, with the wide angle lens. This was the thinning effect on the hips. And I came to this one and I said, her hips are blown out because the camera is too close and the axis of the lens is here. And I was wrong. You can see that the axis of the lens is really up toward her face. So let me explain. And again, because I've been out of the game a couple of years, it was just a lapse in judgment on, I, on my part. But what happens is with the wide angle lens, let's just say for example, this is the curvature of the lens, okay? And it's not the exact curvature. This is just for illustration purposes only. So the part on a wide angle that's not going to get discord, dis distorted too much is here in the center part of the lens. But as things start coming into the, you know, this radius down here and up at the top, well, it's actually spherical, right? It's 360 degrees things on this part of the lens start getting distorted. So here, if you can imagine this is the lens and it's pointed at Kate Blanchett, it really is eye level, right? And it's not being distorted, but her hips, her hips were caught with this part of the frame where the curvature starts becoming extreme. And that's why this, her hips appear so large. So again, the, I just wanted to correct myself that the, the lens is high at her face level and this is not too distorted but it got distorted in this portion of the lens that caught her hips okay and I know I just kind of beat that to death okay so now we're in Vogue magazine April 2018 so let's get started okay here we have Ralph Lauren and if you ever watch the opening ceremonies of some of the Olympic Games, Ralph Lauren has been chosen, I don't know how many times over the years, but if, you know, a couple, two or three times at least, and his designs are by far, I, I've always thought he had the best designs of, of any country. He dresses the Americans, and this is, right, it's not explicit here that this is a an Olympic uniform but it certainly looks as if it would be an Olympic uniform right it's just all the white this is traditionally his motif for the Olympics is a red white and blue and it's generally pretty conservative in nature and it's just wonderful Ralph Lauren is among the best designers okay Saint Laurent we're back with another rooftop as I've said in previous episodes Saint Laurent is known. If there's a niche for Saint Laurent, it's this rooftop photography and it works. Look at that. It's a wonderful image. Okay, this is interesting for Mew Mew because this is like a travel trailer and you can see it's a radius, right? So it's kind of neat here that the uh, Photoshop technician has removed the photographer from the image because the way this is radiused for sure the photographer would have been in the image and the technician has used content aware right uh, healing and removed the photographer from the trailer it's interesting it's good it's good post-processing work here this is this is really a wonderful image again I think that's a uh, Natalie Portman I'm pretty sure it is from if you want to see I'm into psychological thrillers right I love psychological thrillers and if you if you haven't seen the black swan I highly recommend it it's an awesome movie truly awesome movie but I'm just getting back to Natalie Portman here she looks wonderful and this could have been now this is just regular standard paper right and if they would have taken this Miss Dior and moved it down very low so that the image would have been kind of left alone or at least you know as a standalone this could and if they would have printed it on heavy cardstock 
this would have been right that would have been a beautiful poster but look what they've done that the text is too big and it's on regular regular thin paper here's another one see that's right let me get the glare off that other page that could have been right if, if they would have reduced that to one page see this is what I was see they moved the text off of the actual image now imagine if they would have done that here or at least as I've said reduced it right so you could have had something as a keeper this is nice Neiman Marcus um, nothing really super remarkable here it's just a nice photo here I chose this image because normally when these when they do shoots like this photographers they have a crew and they're generally like there are four people holding a giant scrim out of frame and it's a very sheer white panel that allows sun to come through but it diffuses the sun and makes it not so see so what I'm trying to get at the photographer here is shot outdoors and the light on the models is very harsh right super harsh and you can see how harsh the shadows are they're very defined if they would have had a, a scrim overhead and four people holding the scrim right four corners the scrim is overhead the light passes through and it's diffused it's a very soft natural light because it's sunlight but it's diffused and these shadows would be much much softer right they wouldn't be so harsh so again this is this is from photographers trying to save money or Neiman Marcus trying to save money on the shoot and there should have been a crew holding that diffusing panel out of frame and you can see the same going on here. The, the light on this, these models, it's, it's much too harsh. Far too harsh. Okay, we've already covered this one in a prior episode. This you see, uh, Dolce & Gabbana. It's a beautiful photo. Absolutely marvelous. Look at the... Right, the gemstones in here, even if this is costume jewelry, just for the, for the sake of argument, let's say this is really not very expensive jewels. And you're right, you can get this from a Clark's or an H&M. Even if this were costume jewelry, it's beautiful. Okay, you don't need tens of thousands of dollars. You can look great with just 20 or $30 costume jewelry from an accessory store. Charlotte's, H&M, Clark's. There are many that deal in accessories this brooch here right nice this whole thing even her eyeglasses are in agreement just wonderfully executed Dolce & Gabbana are really top shelf okay this is I forgot her name I always forget her name but she's a Dutch model and she's represented by paparazzi model management out of Amsterdam and and I say this sincerely she has been a model now for maybe I think she's been kind of popular for four or five years and not once and I mean this sincerely she has not been properly photographed one time nobody knows how to dress her and nobody knows how to make her up and nobody knows how to photograph her it's just it's truly unbelievable I included this because you know a lot of these houses like Balenciaga right and when you get into bags you get into Louis Vuitton and Hermes a Louis Vuitton or Hermes or Hermes bag can, can cost anywhere from 6,000 to about 25,000 US dollars and that's just for a bag so those are real high-end fashion houses but you get into H&M and it's showing right here skirt for $24.99 and the reason I'm including this is because I love this when these department stores make fashion affordable to the masses okay so the point is to look great it's like I was showing you in that 
Dolce and Gabbana, even if you get costume jewelry and clothing from JCPenney or Macy's or H&M, you don't have to spend a fortune to look great. You can spend a very small amount of money and look fantastic. So high praise to H&M for making fashion affordable to the working working woman. Okay, so this is this is the image I had in mind when I was showing you in the last episode. It was a very thick Chanel advertisement and it was thick cardstock and very glossy. Now this is regular paper. Okay, this is just standard paper, very little gloss. But look at that image. Now can you imagine Pantene printing this on that heavy, heavy glossy cardstock and removing this text bring this text down here with the Pantene and this on this page would be nothing but the image look how gorgeous that is that would be an on heavy cardstock glossy you cut it and you put it in a picture frame and that's worthy of hanging on your wall for years that is really a museum quality photo and again it's ruined with text and it's not on glossy cardstock stock and it's again another opportunity lost this is cool the reason I included this this is an anniversary Nikon was cele celebrating an anniversary of a famous shoot with Marilyn and I'm just including it here because back in 2013 Nikon released a digital version of a camera something like this it was an F mount right and I had I have both it's an FE and an FM they're film cameras but this is a little earlier than than those but the the point is when Nikon released the DF as in David Frank Nikon DF it was a I think a 16 megapixel full frame again from 2013 and it's an awesome camera it was released in the same time frame as the flagship D4 but the D4 is weather sealed and it has the big buffer for like sports photography or wildlife photography if you want to catch like a bird in flight so this has the same sensor but it didn't have the big buffer and it didn't have the weather sealing of the flagship D4 so my point is and I'm not I'm not being paid this is not a paid promotion because the camera is from 2013 so I'm certainly not trying to promote something that's nine years old but if you want a heck of a good camera and I mean awesome image quality you should look at the DF it's this hipster throwback look but current digital technology okay this is beautiful here and the reason I wanted to show this these are opposing images with the type of lens used because this is a wide angle look how small her head is here compared to the rest of her body so when you see that when you see a body being elongated you know that's a wide angle okay that's probably toward the 24 if it's if this were the flagship kind of 24 through 70 which is kind of like the go-to fashion lens for like FX Nikon FX full frame or Canon full frame the two flagship lenses from either company is the 24 through 70 that's what most fashion photographers use so this would be twisted the barrels being twisted to the 24 side of the lens and over here this is telephoto you can tell the compression and I don't mean because she's small I mean if you can tell her body you can tell the body's being somewhat compressed right except for this arm this arm looks a little but to me that looks like it was a telephoto lens and this is wide angle so you got you got some juxtaposition here okay that's it so that was a pretty brief uh, episode today so this was Vogue April 2018 and if I can ask you respectfully, if you enjoy these videos, can you please give me a thumbs up? Because uh, it, it affects YouTube's algorithm, right? They're the kind of like, the, I don't want to really say AI, but there's a, 
there, of course there's an algorithm running behind the scenes and YouTube will promote videos right the higher the like the higher the thumbs up the more it gets promoted so right you, my, I get more visibility on these videos so if you would please if you enjoy these all I'm asking I don't have a GoFundMe page I'm not asking I've never asked for any money but I would ask that you work with me and please give me a thumbs up and I would really appreciate it thank you